Well, welcome to another episode of our online Bible class. And today uh, you're out on my mother's farm, my mother's property, where we've been doing some work to renovate an old pond. We've, we've reworked the, the dam. We've dredged a lot of the, the mud out. And, and you may say, well, you know, what does this have to do with Bible study? You know? So you can see from that that we've done a lot of disturbance. We've got the pond kind of shaped up. We've got all the old silt dredged out, but the uh, the the pond border has been very disturbed. And we're moving on into the winter season. We got a lot of rain. We're in late October. So what can we do to stabilize this area? You say it's a little late in the year to plant grass. So we're going to have all this winter rain and all this exposed soil. This whole thing is just going to be a huge mud hole. However, we can plant winter wheat. So uh, watch this for a second. And, and so, as I just mentioned, we're going to plant these seeds. This is winter wheat. And even though we're moving into the fall of the year, it, it's amazing. These little seeds have within them the power to become big, tall grass. And... You know, you know exactly where I'm, I'm headed with this if you're a, a Bible student. The parable of the sower, right? That it's, it's the powers in the seed when it hits good soil, when it finds good soil, that it, it grows really, really lush vegetation that, that can control erosion on, uh, you know, slopes like these and disturbed soils and all that. It, 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 the, you know, the seed. And so if, if we have a real commitment to studying God's Word that, like we talked about last week, it's, it's alive, it has power in it, it, it can grow and produce fruit. And the person we're going to have a conversation with today about Bible study, I think is somebody that has really illustrated that with, with her life, is a long-term commitment when it feels like it and when it doesn't feel like it, to continue to let that seed be planted in the soil of our heart and to grow and produce fruit. So, uh, class, uh, welcome. Today, uh, we're going to have a great discussion uh, with uh, Kathy Gock Rummett, a uh, faithful sister in our congregation. She and her husband, Pete, uh, are, have, have downsized their home. We just got you talking about that. But uh, Pete just finished uh, a tenure as one of our elders and went right from that into knee replacement. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Kathy is a scarred veteran. I've just got to say that. She's a <laughs> mother and a grandmother uh, times several. And uh, she's also been uh, quite successful as a public speaker. Uh, she's a very committed, dedicated student of God's Word. So when I ask her, uh, you know, tell us about your favorite Bible passage. Uh, like some people, she said, I'm not sure I've got a favorite. It's the one I've been reading most recently. But anyway, we zeroed in on a, on a couple. And if you'll let me, uh, Kathy, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to pull up the first one that you mentioned, show it briefly, and then we'll get into talking about why this is one of your favorites, okay? So okay. let's see if I can um, orchestrate things here to do this. And let's see, I believe it's right about here. Uh, isn't this the one that we discussed? Ex, uh, excuse me, Exodus 14, 14. There's one from the yes. Old Testament and yes. one from the New Testament. And so this one, uh, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what, what's, what did you find that, that really pulled you into this particular passage? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's because... I tend to be um, a little overly passionate about everything. And if it's important to me, I tend to be extra passionate about it. And I don't always tend to wait and let God work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, this verse challenges me in that way. And I love studying the Old Testament because you have an opportunity to see so many instances of where God handles things. I was actually reading in Deuteronomy this morning that um, God actually 
took care of the battle. They didn't ha even have to do anything. Over and over again, we see how God uh, can eliminate the, the warriors uh, down to just a handful so that he actually wins that battle. And in this particular passage, the Israelites had just fled Egypt after the death of all the firstborn Egyptians. And Pharaoh had decided that he was going to pursue them. So they were caught between Pharaoh and the Red Sea. And they started grumbling and complaining to Moses, you brought us out here to die. Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? And this was God's reply. The Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. Now, some translations say you only have to be silent and some say you only have to be still. Both those work well for me because I tend to be a fixer. And if there's a problem, I tend to try to jump right in and I tend to start figuring out all kinds of scenarios and how to fix it and how to make it work. And, and I don't all, I never, not I don't always, I never, none of us ever know the long-term consequences of any of our actions. And so I don't, I, God can see the whole picture. He can see the future. He knows the consequences of whatever action is taken to fix a problem. And I don't know that. And so I need to be still and to be silent and to watch him work. And I don't think that means that I do nothing. We do what we are called to do every day. We move through life. We move through it with God as our partner, but yet, I don't need to be trying to just run and fix everything. Just be still, be silent, watch God work. Well, um, I, I think that you're showing great, uh, you know, self-awareness and, and uh, in your encounter with the word here, seeing how that this, this uh, speaks to some of your needs. But I, I got to wonder, did, did this grow out of a particular season in your life, a particular event? Or is this just something that you think, yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I approach life? Or is, is there something in particular that drove you in this direction? I don't, I don't know that there's any particular incident. I think I've made a lot of mistakes in my life trying to rush ahead of God and fix things. Um, I, don't, I can't think of any one particular. I, I might could come up with a whole list of times I, I've kind of blown it by rushing in there. So I don't, I don't think that that it's um, necessarily out of a particular time or season. Um, I think sometimes verses really jump out at me at, in different seasons of life. And one of the things I always do is just pray that as I'm reading and studying, God will reveal to me what little passage or part of that passage I need for this time in my life. And um, and it's always interesting. I think I know you know this as well, that we can read a passage over and over again and it, and it jumps out at us in a different way or a phrase catches us in a different way. And I think uh, I did a study several months ago, years ago on promises of God and going through the Bible and looking for promises. And I actually think it was during that study that this jumped out at me because this is a promise I can claim the Lord will fight for me. And so it's, I think it was during that study of, of promises that I actually came across this verse. I, I, one of the questions I wanted to talk to you about are, are key words. And I, I think you mentioned two already, but I'll, I'm not going to answer the question to, to fight against this. I'm going to let you answer the question. What, what key words in here are particularly meaningful to you? Well, the, the fact that the Lord will fight Mm -hmm. And the fact that I need to be silent and still. Okay, so we, we've talked about uh, fight and, and being silent or still, or I think maybe some translations say calm or something like that. I don't know. But uh, to me, that word fight is important because um, my mental picture of, of how life works uh, has been growing in the direction of, of really believing that we are in a, in a fight. And, you know, we, we often talk about the fact that we need to understand this world is not our home, but it, this, we, this world is, in fact, a battlefield between good and evil. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in, in our study of Colossians in, in this class, we, we mm -hmm. talked about, uh, Paul said, we've been delivered from the dominion of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of the son he loves. And these two things, the darkness and the kingdom are, uh, are in, in conflict, you know, all mm -hmm. the time. So if the fact that it is a fight, but that we have a great fighter on our side is, uh, you know, is, is tremendously encouraging to me. Uh, so I guess the next question, uh, maybe we've already answered it, but uh, <clears throat> this is the Old Testament, but is, is there a gospel? Is the gospel in this, uh, in this verse? Where do you find the, the, the good news here? Oh, yeah, I think we find the good news all through the Bible. I, the, whole, I, the, the fact that, that God, be, that he loves me so much, that he he wants good for me and he is willing to fight for me that's gospel to me that god is my protector he is my avenger he will go before me he will fight my battles for me uh, that's gospel to me well um now i'm going to ask you um uh, another well let, let us you are a person that is is widely read in the in the Bible. Do you see some connections uh, between this particular verse and some other important places in the Bible? Um, well, y yes. Um, now, one thing I keep seeing because I'm doing a lot of study right now in the Old Testament is this passage really gets repeated over and over again um, of how God fights for the Israelites when they are not warriors and they don't know what they're doing and he goes before them to fight for them. But in the New Testament, even in Revelations, we see battle, 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 and, and God is there. He's, he's in all of it. He's in all of our struggles. And so, yes, I think it is a theme that runs throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. Maybe I'm a little off, but one thing I see here is the uh, is the scene in the Gospels where the disciples are caught in a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus calms the storm. He's asleep mm -hmm. in the in the bow of the boat, and they say, "Master, don't you care if we drown? You know, we're this is us. Wake up, help, save us!" You know, and it's, he's he's kind of like, you know, where's your face? Just mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take care of this, you know, and, and he does. Mm -hmm. I, I see, you know, in both cases, you're on the edge of, or you're in, in there's a C in both, both stories. Oh, that's good. Yeah. God, God delivers in, in both cases. So that's a connection that I see. Yeah. Um, well, th this, you know, this is a little bit easier than it is for some abstract passages, but if, if you were a great artist and you took this verse as your inspiration for a, a sculpture or a weaving or a painting or something like that, what, what would, what would you do? If, if, if you've got a commission, I said, I'll give you $2 million if you'll produce a work of art to illustrate this verse, what would it be? Um, well, I, I don't have an artistic... I won't give you $2 million, bone. just make it clear, but if I did. <laughs> yeah, I don't have an artistic bone in my body, but it, this the vision I get with, is it's a picture of Jesus in front and Jesus behind. And I'm hemmed in on all sides by Jesus, that I am protected. Um, I think that's the vision I have from this verse. Okay, well, th that's great. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to race ahead now to the other verse that you mentioned, and we'll just pop it up here for a minute. I'm, I'm assuming that it's coming across great in the video here, and that is in the book of Acts, when the church is very new, and uh, verse 14, uh, it's, it, the they here, I think, are the opponents of Christianity. It says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe you'd like to fill in the, the context a little bit there for our, our listeners if they're not familiar with it, but tell us about this verse. Well, uh, Peter and John were being questioned by the religious leaders because uh, about healing a crippled man. And they attributed that healing to Jesus. And then they accused those rulers of having rejected Jesus. And at that point, these rulers looked at them and they saw these are uneducated men. 
They are unlearned men, and yet they are bold enough to speak out for Jesus and to speak out um, against us for not believing. And then they recognized that they had been with Jesus. So that's kind of the context for that. Um, and I do remember when this verse specifically grabbed my attention. Before we did um, our major downsize, I actually had um, a little prayer closet. And every morning about 4.30, I would get up and I would go there and I might be there an hour and a half. I might be there two hours. Um, that's where I had my study time and it was quiet and there was nothing going on. And I remember coming across this verse one day and it was literally, I, mean, I get emotional even thinking about it. It was literally the most convicting verse I had ever come across as a Christian. And um, I realized that I'm spending an hour and a half to two hours every morning in this room with Jesus. But when I come out of this place, can my husband recognize that I have been with Jesus? As I go throughout my day, as I interact with other people, can people tell that I have been with Jesus? And that, um, that's, that was a very convicting verse to me because yes, the gospel does change us, but being with Jesus changes our life and change it and can change other people around us if we allow it to. Um, I guess one thing that's always struck me about Jesus' uh, educational methods, if we call his teaching methods with his followers, his disciples, <laughs> is that um, th there was a fair bit of time that was spent in the classroom with him talking and them listening. But there was also an awful lot of time that they were just together. Mm -hmm. They were just together. And, um, you know, they, they picked up a lot from just watching him, interacting with him, being around him without him saying, okay, this is gonna be on the test. You need to remember these three points, you know, that kind of stuff that we do in a lecture. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you, you you think back in your interaction with um, with parents or teachers, and, and you remember the times when when you did things. You may remember things they told you, but you're much more likely to remember the times when you actually did things. Mm -hmm. So that to me is is uh, you know that these people had been with Jesus. They weren't mm -hmm. just students, but they were with him. That's that's kind of interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what's the good news here? Gospel. Where's the gospel in this verse? Well, the gospel and the good news in this verse for me is that if I just, if I will be with Jesus, it will change my life. Mm -hmm. um, and if, and not only that, but if it changes my life, people will see that I have been with Jesus and that it has affected my life and they will want what I have. Do you see links or connections between this verse and some others in the Bible, or does it remind you of other places in the Bible? Uh, well, it, it reminds me of every letter that Paul wrote, mm -hmm. uh, just instructing us on Christian living, godly living, how to live out each day. And um, this verse always takes me to, to that. If I, am with, if I am with the word, if I am in those letters, if I am in the life of Jesus, we one of the Bible study groups that I'm in just finished a study of Max Lucado's book, Just Like Jesus. You know, I've, I've got to be with him if I'm going to be just like him. And, and if I'm going, if I am, if I can become more and more like Jesus, it will attract more and more people to the gospel just by how I live my life. You know, I see a great connection here to Mark chapter two, where it talks about Jesus chose 12. As he chose them for two reasons, that they might be with him and that he might send them out. And uh, so again, the, the, the like Mark, uh, Matthew 4, 13, he says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He says, just be with me and I'll take care. You know, you'll get it if you're just, if you're just with me. So that's, that's a, a link there maybe. Uh, <clears throat> well, this is a question I didn't ask about the one in Exodus, and, uh, but I want to 
apply this question to both passages, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> What, you know, as you, as you reason with this and think about it, meditate on it, do you ever have some, some questions that arise? I have a list of questions kind of in my back pocket that I'm going to ask to God if I ever get, I'm going to ask God if I ever get to heaven. I have a sneaking suspicion if I ever get to heaven, the questions won't seem quite so important, but right now they do. Uh, do, do you have questions about either one of these that you struggle with? Um. I don't know that I have questions about either one of these that I struggle with. I, I haven't really thought that through. Later today, I may think of something. Yeah, yeah. But, but right now, I don't, I, don't, I don't call to mind a question that I struggle with about either of these passages. Um, more, more about the struggle of trying to apply both of them to my life, I think, than, than a, a particular question about them. One thing that comes up to me with regard to the first verse about, you know, be still, the Lord will fight for you. I, I have a tendency to think, well, yeah, that's true about the Egyptian army. If you're a Hebrew slave, yeah, I, I've read that story. That, but Hey, I've got this problem right here, right now. Is God going to fight? You know, is he going to fight for me on this? That's what I want to know. Or sometimes when I perceive that I lost, I say, why didn't you fight for me then? You know, what, what happened then? What's the deal? Well, so, That's where we don't have that whole picture that really we did win. We just can't see it today. Yeah, yeah, maybe so, maybe so. Uh, what would change? Uh, what would change in our world if everyone saw this passage the way that you do? What would change in our world? Well, less stress, less fighting among ourselves, um, more dependence on God more peace and calm and love in our world. You know, I, I think uh, we are in a community that really values education. I personally place a high premium on education. Uh, this first defeats that a little bit, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the fact that, that, that they were impressed that, that in spite of their humble origin, that, that these guys really had something to offer because, you know, they had been with Jesus. So that's yes. a impressive thing to me. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll end with the, the, the art question again. If you, if you were commissioned to uh, create an artwork that was inspired by this passage, uh, what would it look like? Well, I always think of the picture that we've seen many times of um, Jesus seated on a rock and children at his um, feet sitting and intently listening. And I guess the picture I would create would I would put myself in that picture. Well, that's great. Uh, I really appreciate your time this morning, Kathy. Uh, having us in by video to the beauty of your home there. That makes us feel right at home and uh, sharing your little bit of your insights from your, your Bible study. And these uh, verses from now on will definitely remind me of, uh, of Kathy Brummett. So I want you to know that. So anyway, Thanks. best of luck in uh, keeping your uh, husband on the mend from all of this uh, joint uh, work as, and, and I won't, I won't uh, ask for medical details for this, uh, for this <laughs> class here, but we can talk about that, you know, uh, offline maybe. So anyway, thank you so much for being with us today. Okay. Thank you, All thank right. you very much. Bye now. Bye-bye.